Welcome to the Museum of Artifacts that made America and the story of how the cannon gave the Union a shot at victory. First developed in China during the 12th or 13th centuries, cannons revolutionized the way that battles were fought. For the first time, they allowed armies to fire heavy projectiles propelled by the explosion of a gunpowder charge over great distances and cause immense damage to enemy soldiers and equipment. Later, Europeans developed their own cannons and brought them along as they colonized the New World. At the beginning of the Civil War, both armies used different kinds of cannons. Siege cannons, used usually as defensive measures, were so heavy they had to be mounted on stationary carriages. Naval cannons were used to fight battles at sea. On land, cannons used by field artillery units were smaller and mounted on wheeled vehicles pulled by horses. As such, they were mobile and became incredibly important to both Union and Confederate armies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Early in the war, innovators at the Phoenix Iron Company in Pennsylvania perfected a new way of making wrought iron cannons. Called the three-inch ordnance rifle, they were strong, light, and incredibly accurate. More importantly, they were not prone to explode upon firing like earlier cast iron cannons. Between 1861 and 1865, the U.S. War Department oversaw the production of more than 1,000 of these cannons, giving the Union field artillery a distinct advantage on the battlefield. In contrast, the Confederates relied on older, less effective models and struggled to compete. Coupled with the Union Army's vast reserves of ammunition, these high-tech cannons ultimately helped propel the North to victory. How do technological know-how and creativity combine to advance warfare? 